Hi, it's time for another Monday with Melanie. Thank you for joining me. Um, we're going to do kind of a couple of things in a row. We're going to be talking about levels of dementia. So since this is the first one, we're going to be talking about some of those early changes that you might either be experiencing for yourself or experiencing with family people around you or experiencing in your job or just experiencing as part of a community. So um, Mondays with Melanie talking about early changes. So for each of these, we're going to try to kind of have a little bit of a pattern. So we're going to talk about how do you know that this is where you are. And we're going to talk about what are some of the changes you might see. We're going to talk about what are some of the strategies and approaches you might um, use. And we're going to talk about some of those conversations that the timing is right to have these conversations when you're at this part of dementia. So let's go ahead and get started with how do you know? How do you know if it's early dementia or if it's just not, if it's just normal aging, if it's just what happens to our brains and our bodies as we change and as we get older? And the reality is you're probably not going to know for sure unless you bring in some members of your team. You're probably not going to know for sure unless you bring in your healthcare team and unless you bring in other people who have relationships with that person from different parts of their life. You probably aren't going to know unless you get a really in-depth, deep, meaningful assessment that involves more than just a 15-minute office visit that involves really looking deeply at um, medications, looking deeply at um, lab work, looking deeply at some formal cognitive evaluation and screening, and looking deeply at who is this person? Who is this individual, this precious, important person? Who is this person? Because what, from my mind as a clinician, really makes a difference is really thinking about is this person different and how are they different? And the only way to know if something is different is to really know what's normal for this person, what's usual for this person. So we're gonna talk about some of the specific places you might wanna think about or look at. So I'm gonna start at, is this different from a core perspective? You know, is this different about this person's values? This person used to be very generous and now they really aren't sharing either themselves or their resources with people. Or this person used to be very um, family focused and always wanted to be with family and now they're avoiding people. Or is this a person who used to be very um, open in their home and now they're closing themselves away. So is there a change in values or experiences or strengths? What's different? What's different from a relationship perspective? What's different from, we used to be able to have this kind of inside joke and now I said something and that person found it really offensive. Or I used to be able to take a joke and now if it's feeling really different when somebody, those things are hitting me a little differently, pay attention to those. Is it different from a historical perspective? That someone's always been, I've always been really good at managing my money and now I'm bouncing checks. Or this person's always been really good at managing their money and now it's not going so well. So thinking about what is different different and why is that important because that's what you bring to the conversation with those professionals who are part of the assessment is what's usual for this person how is this different and why is it different so that's a really important piece so what are you going to notice well the reality is it's going to depend because what we think about as dementia has changed and so dementia's not just Alzheimer's disease. Dementia is not just memory changes. Dementia is a lot bigger and a lot broader and a lot deeper than that. So what's gonna change might depend on 
the type of dementia from the person. What might change might depend on who is the core of this person. Where did the person start? What were their um, core abilities? I've never been good with directions. So me getting lost isn't going to be something you're ever going to hold me accountable for because I get lost now. I've been lost most of my life. So me getting lost doesn't really mean anything much, but it might mean something for someone else. Me not remembering names isn't going to mean much. I don't usually pay a lot of attention to names unless it's somebody who used to be really good at names and now they're struggling with it. And it's also going to depend on the supports within the situation, the supports within the environment. And that might go both ways because that might mean if this is a person who's in a wonderfully supportive environment, we might not notice the changes until way down the road because that supportive environment is filling in the blanks. That supportive environment is providing safety. That supportive environment, those supportive people are keeping the rest of us and maybe even the person themselves from noticing that things aren't the way they used to be. And because our brains, we've talked about this before, your brain controls everything. So everything comes on your brain. So the changes you see might be changes in memory or it might be a change in the way you're thinking, or it might be changes in language, and that could be your ability to use language or your ability to comprehend language. It could be more this kind of change that the person's decision making is uh, consistent with how they've been their lives, or it might be their financial kind of calculations aren't the same way they used to be. It you might be something like impulse control, or it might be something like ability to organize themselves, or it might be you, the first thing you might notice is the person who always had their taxes done and submitted by the middle of February is now getting extensions or not getting extensions, which is even worse. Um, managing time is different. It might be that the person is changing in their ability to do things for themselves, to take care of themselves, or to take care of their environment, or to take care of the people in their lives, their relationships. It might have to do with how the day flows. And someone who used to be able to deal with things one way, now oh, not so much anymore. That brings us to the topic of how can you help? So you're gonna help by noticing. You're gonna help by how you share your noticings. So what I mean by that is who you share your noticings with, that you might wanna share your noticings with other people who are important to you if you're the person living with dementia. Other people who are important to your health care. If you're noticing about somebody else, you might want to share with those same people. You might want to share with the person and we're not going to become bullies about it. The, the tendency tends to be that dementia is this on off switch. Either the person can do everything themselves or they can't do anything. And that idea of the on off switch is awful, that's terrible, because their whole variations and their fluctuations and the way it used to be that doesn't work to just take over and say, we've got to help the way we would if there's, if there's not the transition. So the idea if that there are ways to help without being a bully. There are ways to help without forcing confrontation. There are ways to help where I can be respectful of my perspective, be respectful of the person living with dementia's perspective, not beating each other up, but instead finding a way to build that connection again. How can you help? You can help by taking care of yourself. So when you go into those interactions, you're in a good space. 
whether you are the person who's experiencing the changes or, or whether you're the person who is noticing changes about someone else. So we're gonna finish up this section with some conversations. Um, and we could probably do, and maybe we should, you know, drop into the, the comments if you'd like us to do some sessions about um, any one of these things. But the first conversation I think is important, whether you're the person living with dementia or whether you're someone who's supporting that person or with that person in relationship, is conversations about preferences, not promises. So think about that a minute. The conversation about preferences, not promises. So what that means is, what do I, what do I want? What would I prefer? What's my value? And that the person I'm having the conversation with isn't promising me that. They're promising to consider that. They're promising to respect me and to value me and to be with me, but it's not a promise. So for example, if the conversation is, um, I love my home and I don't ever want to leave my home. If that's the conversation, I love my home, I don't ever want to leave my home. We can have that conversation about that preference without my partner saying, you can stay home the rest of your life because that may not be a promise that that care partner can keep. I promise that I'm gonna always remember and value your need to be home. Then we start to talk about what's important about being home. So what's important about being home is I've got my stuff, I can support that. If what's important about my home is I can go outside, I can support that. If what's important about my home is that um, I have um, special things, we can support that. So what are the preferences without getting stuck in the promises? The second piece of conversation, I think, has to do with um, things that are important from my life. My, my current life and my past life. So uh, we were just having a conversation. Lisa was just saying, what is the deal with you and the P's? And if you've watched some of my other things, you've seen the six P's and you've seen, so these are my P's from the past. So I don't know, just so many good words have P's in them. Um, but, but we're gonna talk about four P's from the past and the present. So they are, who are the people who are meaningful to me. And those might be my current people. Those might be people from my past. So it might be things that you know about me or it might be things that maybe you don't know about me. It might be things about my family before you became part of my life or my work life before, people who are important to me from work before you became part of my life. It might be, and, and there's controversy here. Ooh, controversy. Where do pets fit? You know, should pets have their own separate pee? Should pets fit into people or should pets fit into the next P? And the next P is possessions. Because I think some people do have the relationship with their pets that they're people-ish. And some people do have relationships with their pets that they're possession-ish. Um, but that P of possession. So what are the things that people value? The things that are important. And a lot of times I'll give you some hints. It might be things like money. You know, so how did I used to keep up with my money? Did I used to use, before everybody started using, you know, things like this. Oh, my things are stuck together. Before people started using things like this to carry everything around in. People used to use things like this. Before people used to have their money stored on this, they used to have their money in this. And so what are some of those pieces, possessions that people kept up with? Things like keys. 
So before people used to have things where you could just, um, you know, hit a button, keys used to actually be important to people and people used to actually um, use their keys. And so having, you know, this might not really feel like a key if what I'm thinking about is something like this. So what are those possessions? It might be a car, it might be a, a play, the next P, place. So maybe my place is my kitchen. And what I really need is to be in my kitchen. Maybe the place is my job, my office. Maybe my place is my home. So we've had, talked about people, we've talked about possessions, we've talked about places. The last P weaves into some of those but it actually is a little different because it's what is my position? So maybe I'm looking for my kids, not because I love them, although I do, but it's my job to take care of my kids. It's my job to pick my kids up from school. It's my job to provide my kids with nutrition. So that's so important for who I am because I love my kids and because that's my position. Maybe what I miss about my work is not so much the building or the office or my chair. Maybe what I miss about my work is really being valuable and competent. So that's the P that I'm missing is my position. So having the conversations about who are the people who are really important, who was your best friend in elementary school? Who were the people who grew up in your neighborhood? What is your favorite part of your house? What is your favorite, um, if you were gonna, if there was a, a, if there had been a fire when you were a teenager, what would you have grabbed? What album would you have grabbed? Or I know y'all don't use albums, I used albums. So having those conversations, so you're prepared when the person needs something and they aren't sure exactly what they need, you may be able to help them find the thing that they need, or you may be able to help them find something that reminds them of that thing that they need or connects with them in an emotional way. And then the last conversation is kind of similar, but but not so much about, about things and stuff, but more about how did you used to? So if I think about getting up at the, just take a moment, when do you brush your teeth in the morning? And just think about it. And there are people who feel very strongly about all of these things. There are people who feel very, I'm one of them. I get up in the morning, I go brush my teeth. You know, I brush my teeth before I have breakfast. Even if I'm eating breakfast by myself, even if there's nobody else in my house, I get up and I brush my teeth. That's just part of my life. There are other people who don't do that. I'm not gonna say they're nasty people. I'm just gonna say, but <laughs> I'm just gonna say it's different. But some people get up in the morning and they don't brush their teeth until after they've had their coffee or their breakfast or whatever. So noticing those how-tos. How did you, you know, take a shower? You know, did you take tubs or do you, do you prefer a tub bath or do you, when you were growing up, you know, how did you get cleaned up? When you were growing up, how did you, how has life changed? And you don't have to tell the person living with dementia, I'm doing this, so when you can't tell me, I'll know. And if you're the person living with dementia, you don't have to tell the people, I'm doing this so you'll know when I don't know. You can do it as a, we're sharing things that are important about our lives. We're sharing things that are meaningful about our life and, and the way things have changed and the way things have stayed the same. So ultimately, what it comes down to in these early, early, early changes and moments is that we keep the connection, that we, we keep the connection through the journey. And that comes by both identifying who you are and who you were, and still, I think, who you want to be. So thank you so much for joining me with this um, um, Mondays with Melanie. Make sure you check out some of the links that are dropped into the bottom or available on um, as we go through this because there's more information that can be um, helpful to you when you're in this thing and stay in touch with us. Again, so much thanks to Dementia Alliance of North Carolina for giving me this opportunity 
to reach out to people I might not be able to connect with otherwise. If you've got ideas for programs, if you've got ideas for other Mondays with Melanie or other ways you'd like to reach out for, um, for support, for information, for referrals, stay in touch. Have a great rest of your day.